Greetings, this is September 2nd at 12 noon. We are looking at an image from the Dry BC Sheridan Cam looking west and I see a lot of blue haze, not a lot of orange haze. That's an indication that there's a lot of smoldering going on. However, when we shift to the Beto Tree Cam and that's linked below, we can see some of that orange uh, haze and smog going up on the western southwest of Sheridan Lake. We're going to take a look at windy and we can see why. Winds are coming uh, from the south southwest at 13 kilometers an hour. They've slowly been increasing velocity since about 2.45 a.m. Uh, when the winds shifted we are looking at a peak at approximately 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, not too much higher, about 15 kilometers an hour. The, the risk is in the wind gusts. And if you're in a specific area around lakes, valleys, or up on the plateaus, you may experience variation both in direction and speed. But if you notice at 9 p.m. on the forecast, it looks to be a wind shift again and coming from the northwest. So we're going to have to watch for that. Uh, that can be an anomaly on the wind models, but uh, the two of them are agreeing. I also just want to touch on this. If you look at the lower right-hand portion of your screen, there's a little arrow that's pointing up. That's to toggle on the description and all the links below, uh, just in case you weren't aware of it. Okay, let's jump over to the infrared. This is the VIIRS system and it was displaying at 10.30 a.m. this morning. And as you can see, limited new hotspots, no northern growth. Uh, we're going to zoom in now. And if you look towards Jack Frost Lake, no movement. If you look to Watch Lake on the western side, no movement. And towards Sheridan, number two lake, uh, we are seeing fringe new hotspots. That is activity that's just popped up. However, there may be a slow creep. It looks like it's being held back at this West Sheridan Road. If we go to the south now, uh, looking towards Little Green Lake Road, North Bonaparte Road, nothing's really changed there. We still have that heat that's been percolating right at the intersection. And if we look to Mount Jim, just left of center on your screen, we can see a couple of hotspots trying to creep upwards towards Nolan Lake. Likewise, on the southwest flank of that fire pocket, we see maybe half a dozen, ten hotspots that are trying to creep down southwest towards the North Bonaparte Road. Let's uh, move further south. Uh, we're looking around Hutchinson. I'm seeing about five new hot spots there north of the lake, uh, just kind of isolated on the fringes. And then w east of the ray field, I'm seeing about three or four new ones popping up there. That's kind of north of Young Lake by about five kilometers. And looking at Young Lake, I'm seeing some activity, very minimal, south of the lake, approximately uh, one kilometer and two kilometers, sort of southwest. And uh, that's been an area of activity in the past. It looks like we've got a couple little flare-ups there, but no expansion on those fire pockets that have been consistently south of the lake or north of the lake. We're going to move uh, southwards again, looking over Loon Lake, Vedette area. And uh, those pockets that are between the pipeline and 3400 Road, uh, the Brigade Road, I am seeing some expansion, about, let's say, 5, 10 on each of those fire pockets. They're at the fringes. and. Uh, that looks like it wants to expand into some new fuel areas. However, no approach really towards Loon Lake at all and nothing approaching towards Vedette at all. Uh, moving even further south, Hyheum, uh, we are seeing some activity trying on the northeast side of that fire pocket trying to creep towards the pipeline, but no real expansion anywhere. There, I am seeing isolated flare-ups uh, under six hours within the overall fire pocket to the southeast of Hyheum. 
Let's continue to move further south. Uh, we're looking around Clamas, Br Brousseau, and uh, the area towards Battle Creek, and no activity there uh, that's new. Uh, we still have those isolated over 24-hour pockets, and there's been no change there. So what I'm seeing is that crews have done a phenomenal job containing this uh, in its current state up till now. And I want to switch to the MODIS system now. It's a little bit larger uh, dots. There are 750 meter uh, variations. And we're looking again at the north flank uh, to the west of Sheridan. And as you can see by this system, it's confirming the data. Uh, no growth, uh, limited isolated hot spots sort of within the existing fire perimeter. We can see this same group at uh, Little Green Lake Road, North Bonaparte Road. Uh, it, I'm going to speculate that there could be some backburning going on there, some control strategy, because it hasn't moved, and that's a good sign. There is no activity that's nearing Pressy Lake on this system. Uh, just what has existed for the last uh, several days uh, two to three kilometers southeast. Returning again to the area around Young Lake and the Bonaparte, uh, no new activity being displayed. Uh, one dot over on the top left of your screen that's in the 12-hour map. Uh, that's a very good sign. That means our crews are definitely on top of it in the Young Lake area. And if we look down to High Hem on this MODA system, I'm only seeing 12 hour uh, infrared. Now that could be because this MODIS system is slightly delayed. That's why we want to get confirmation from multiple sources and you want to check those alerts and bulletins in the links below. What we can see is these two systems are kind of confirming the data up to about quarter to 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But let's switch over to the NRC system and how they're interpreting the data. This is an overview of British Columbia. And as you can see, our BC wildfire fighters have their work cut out for them. There's uh, a lot of activity in the interior and the lower southeast of the province. It is a very volatile situation throughout. Okay, we're going to zoom into the area of the northern flank. Uh, this is between Green, Sheridan, and Horse Lake. And here we are looking at all the data, full 24 hours, and no significant movement. It's confirming the VIIRS system. And here we switch to the 12 hour, 6 hour maps. And that's the new latest activity. It's all kind of within that existing fire pocket and now we switch to the six hour activity and nothing new showing on this system i'm going to leave it at that it's uh i know i realize that everyone is filled with anxiety this is a active wildfire uh, we want to verify our position um, have all our resources ahead of time Movement on the firehead can happen without notice and uh, quicker than infrared can document it. So we want to plan for the worst and hope for the best. I do want to say that I'm seeing uh, evidence of remarkable effort by our wildfire crews to keep this firehead held back in its current position. So let's give them all the support that we can, as well as the RCMP and uh, all the support people that are working very diligently to deal with this ongoing emergency. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and all your very kind comments. We are in this together. We are neighbors and we are looking out for each other. Thank you.